Terrence Bud Crawford, David Avenesian this past Saturday. Bud Crawford got a sensational six round knockout with a right. Taking it off the gears. Nice. Oh! flatline David Avenesian and a all-time classic sparring session that is what that was in this video though I will discuss how and why a fight between Errol Spence Jr. must happen next and why it's possible this is your boy JG this is the punch report let's get into it y'all now before we get started please be so kind like subscribe hit that bell icon for notifications let's get into the content right away. Now, before I discuss the Errol Spence Jr. Terrence Bud Crawford portion of this video, I do wanna do like, I don't know, a 15, 20 second breakdown of the David Avenesian um, Terrence Bud Crawford fight. And it goes a little something like this. Avenesian knew he had no chance in that fight, no chance whatsoever. They think he's a tune up and we're gonna show Crawford different. Nah, dude, that's not it. So he came into the fight and he had a game plan that was indicative of an individual who knew he had limited options. So what he did, it, what he did was he went in with the high guard from the get-go. Um, he had very limited lead hand stuff. Um, he was winging heavy shots. But the game plan ultimately, based on watching the tape for Avenesians, I have to knock Crawford out because I'm not going to outbox him. Fast forward to the sixth round. Body shots are starting to slow down Avenesian. Um, you get into tight exchange. You get knocked out brutally with right hand from Terrence Bud Crawford. But from a game plan perspective, Avenesian said, I have to knock out Bud Crawford if I'm gonna win. That was his only option. I agree with that. It was just highly unlikely. But Bud Crawford went in there and shook off the cobwebs. He alluded to it himself, had a little bit of ring rust um, and practice on David Avenesian, like you would do like you're getting ready for, you know, a real fight, prize fight, and he knocked him out brutally. Moving right along. A couple of questions that I have for the viewers. After the Bud Crawford fight, do you feel as though his leverage position has changed, gone down, or stayed the same when it comes to negotiating a fight with Al Heyman, PBC, and Errol Spence Jr.? Uh, that's my first question. My answer to the question would be this, if I was going to provide a response, which I'm going to. His leverage position has changed, but not in the way that you think. Bud Crawford has essentially demonstrated, I can go anywhere I want and make a boatload of money, 10 mil, 8 million, 11 million dollars, whatever the case may be. The fights won't be significant, but I know I can go make money somewhere else. Um, fighting a guy like David Avenesian um, only really benefits Terrence Bud Crawford and his team. 10 million dollar bag, him and his family, that's great. Um, it's not a compelling fight, an easy fight to call. We're not curious about the fight. It doesn't move the sport of boxing and it lacks meaning overall except for in the bank account for Bud Crawford, that only affects Bud Crawford, not a consumer such as myself. So when he goes to the drawing board, he says, I can go make money elsewhere. But once he agrees to enter a legitimate negotiation with Errol Spence Jr., I'm of the opinion that very little has changed. Welterweight, three division or three belt champion in Errol Spence Jr. Um, he's historically done better numbers. Um, he's historically been a, um, a far superior pay-per-view athlete um, compared to a Terrence Bud Crawford. Um, and those things don't lend to you gaining any more traction specific to the negotiations with Errol Spence Jr. He would be the A side, you would be the B side, B side Bud. So from that perspective, I don't think much has changed, but what Crawford has demonstrated is, I can go out here and make some money. Be okay prime, uh, open the pocketbook, pay my man, uh, put on a production, there's mixed reviews. Some people think that it would look great, clean, professional. Um, others weren't as impressed. I think that's because this is a very polarizing conversation and topic, but how this deal gets done, in my opinion, is like this. Multi-fight deal, but it's important that the Errol, it's important that the Errol Spence, Bud Crawford fight be first and soon. I think Errol, if it pushes out past, obviously April or March time, Errol will be, will have been out a year. He last fought April 16th. Um, Multi-fight will obviously include a rematch and then another opponent. I think that's the best way that the deal gets done. Bud Crawford had already participated in long form negotiations with the PBC side, uh, Steven Espinosa, Al Heyman, Errol Spence Jr. And by his own admission, agreed with all of their BS. That's his terminology. If that's already taken place, and in my opinion, it shouldn't be um, super hard to take the framework of that deal, 
build out around it, adding a, a few things here or there, and then presenting the deal. Like I said, from a splits perspective and pay-per-view pay -per -view buys, I don't think much has changed because uh, Bud Crawford knocked out David Avenesian. If he says, well, I can go get 10, 12 mil up front to fight, I don't know, I came in Mikey Alvarado or something like that, then, then he can go do that. Um, but that's not what's going to move the sport of boxing. And at the moment right now, I think Errol, Errol Spence Jr. has more options um, within the welterweight division or if he chooses to move up. I'm also of the opinion that I can't see a scenario where Bud Crawford moves up to 54 if he can't get Errol Spence at 47 and fights Charlo. It's not likely. So that leaves guys like Virgil Ortiz, Sanny Onis, um, and Boots Ennis. Um, and I think, and I'm not entirely certain that those fights are pay-per-view fights. Um, another question that I have for the viewer or the listener right now, uh, shout out to the Boxing Voice. I was listening to them earlier this morning and they made the point about Boots Ennis uh, versus Bud Crawford possibly not being a pay-per-view event because from a marketing perspective, Jerron Boots Ennis, shout out to Philly, might not be ready. He might not be there. And a lot of love and fanfare that he gets comes from hard cores. I don't know if I feel that way. Am I wrong or mistaken by thinking that Jerron Boots Ennis is more known? Is he up there with Errol? Probably not, not likely. But I feel like he's done enough to where fans of boxing would want to see Bud Crawford. I mean, if you just check out a highlight table of Boots and it's destroying human beings right one after another and say, damn, this dude's going to fight Bud Crawford. I feel like that could be something that would warrant uh, a pay-per-view look. Now, I don't have the business models and the budgetary, you know, constraints and all these fancy things. I don't I don't know that. But I think that fight could experience a level of success on pay-per-view. Now, what you might be worried about is the fact that you do have a more known commodity in Terrence Bud Crawford. And you already know that he's done abysmal on pay-per-view. Amir Khan bout, uh, Victor Postal. And then his most recent and most successful bout was with uh, Sean Porter. Those did woefully, they weren't the best numbers. So I guess I get that, get it from that perspective. But I think, I think Jerron Ennis, if you, if you just a casual and you check out his tape, you might be excited to see a guy like Terrence Bud Crawford take on him. But anyway, I digress. Um, shout out to them though. That's how the fight gets done. And I, and I think one of the other things that's notable is Terrence Bud Crawford, excuse me, Errol Spence Jr. has been very consistent with his messaging. First, with the, he had a tweet a while back where he said he was going to circle the block, essentially insinuating that, you know, whatever happens next, happens next. But I will be coming back to see what's up with that strap for 147 pounds undisputed. Um, the other thing, he had the release of the shirts that he put out, um, with the new strap season shirt with the shark with the folded arm joint. I'll probably put a photo in here or whatever. Um... Essentially, he's saying, hey, I'm knocking at the door of Terrence Bud Crawford. So what I'm really trying to get to is it doesn't seem that Errol Spence has really moved on from a Terrence Bud Crawford showdown. I admittedly am a bit surprised because I think the way that the negotiations fell apart last time and then the back dealing with BLK Prime, that stuff's kind of uh, shady. And, and I won't back off of that. May have left a sour taste in the mouths of a Bud Craw excuse me, of Errol Spence or an Al Heyman. But it sounds like. If the conversations get going, it's likely we will get this fight. So I am optim um, cautiously optimistic, is what I would say, about what may come with this fight. I definitely still want to see the fight. I think the longer it plays out that it doesn't happen, the higher the probability that Terrence Crawford just gets destroyed. Um, he's a talent, but I think that time is not on his side, fighting a dude with the style and the youth of an Earl Smith Jr., um, speaking of Earl Smith Jr., he needs to stay at the house. He, you know, car crashes, his fault or not, but my man's luck is crazy right now. Shout out to him. I'm glad he's doing all right. But that's my time for now. I wonder what you guys think, the possibilities and the probabilities of this fight taking place. What do you think about the BLK Prime production, Terrence Bud Crawford and his performance? Um, this has been your boy, JG. This is The Punch Report. Like, subscribe. Please hit that bell icon for notification. And definitely hit the like button because that's what pushes the videos. Hit the like button. Leave a comment. We out.